Consider this. If evolution necessitates random changes to DNA, how then do we reconcile this with the existence of intricate DNA repair mechanisms that seem to defy randomness? A 2011 article titled The Evolutionary Dynamics of Digital and Nucleotide Codes, A Mutation Protection Perspective, reveals a paradox between the necessity of dysfunctioning mutation protection for evolution and its disadvantage for survival. In short, evolution requires unbounded random changes to DNA in order to be feasible, yet there are multiple layers of DNA repair that prevent unbounded random mutations from happening. This is the paradox that we will delve into today, exploring the intricacies of DNA repair pathways and their implications on Darwinian theory. There are at least five major DNA repair pathways. Each of these pathways is active at different stages of the cell cycle, highlighting the cell's continuous efforts to maintain its genetic integrity. The first pathway is base excision repair, or BER. This pathway deals with small, non-helix distorting base lesions, most commonly caused by oxidation and alkylation damages. It is a simple yet efficient system that involves the removal and replacement of incorrect bases. Next is nucleotide excision repair, or NER. This pathway corrects bulky, helix-distorting lesions. Think of it as the cell's response team for heavy-duty repair work, tackling larger-scale DNA damages that distort the DNA helix. The third pathway is mismatch repair, or MMR. This pathway corrects errors that escape the DNA polymerase proofreading mechanism during DNA replication. It is essentially the cell's quality control, catching and fixing replication errors. Then, there's homologous recombination, or HR. This pathway is responsible for repairing double-strand breaks in DNA. It is a vital repair mechanism, particularly during the S and G2 phases of the cell cycle, when sister chromatids are available as repair templates. Lastly, we have non-homologous end joining, or NHEJ. This pathway also repairs double-strand breaks, but unlike HR, it doesn't require a homologous template. It is a quicker, albeit less accurate, repair mechanism that operates throughout the cell cycle. Now consider the contradiction these sophisticated repair mechanisms pose to Darwinism. Darwin's theory of evolution requires randomness, an unbounded alteration of DNA. Yet these repair mechanisms work tirelessly to prevent such random mutations, maintaining the integrity of the DNA. To give an example of just how contradictory this is to Darwin's theory, a 2009 article titled Extreme Genome Repair compared a bacterium repairing its DNA to Jesus raising Lazarus from the dead. Specifically, the article stated, if its naming had followed rather than preceded molecular analyses of its DNA, the extremophile bacterium Deinococcus radiodurans might have been called Lazarus. After shattering of its 3.2 megabit genome into 20 30,000 bit pieces by desiccation or a high dose of ionizing radiation, D. radiodurans miraculously reassembles its genome such that only three HR later fully reconstituted non-rearranged chromosomes are present, and the cells carry on, alive as normal. The bottom line is that repair mechanisms are incompatible with Darwinism in principle. Yet since sophisticated repair mechanisms do exist in the cell, then the thing to discard in the dilemma to avoid the contradiction is necessarily the Darwinian dogma itself. Cells are complex. They are not dominated by randomly colliding individual protein molecules as Darwinists had presupposed. As Bruce Alberts, two-time president of the National Academy of Sciences, stated in 1998, we have always underestimated cells. But at least we are no longer as naive as we were when I was a graduate student in the 1960s. Instead of a cell dominated by randomly colliding individual protein molecules, we now know that nearly every major process in a cell is carried out by assemblies of 10 or more protein molecules. In fact, in a 2016 paper titled Proteins Put Up With The Roar Of The Crowd, finding a lack of random collisions in the cell was a counterintuitive surprise for the researchers. Specifically, one of the researchers stated, this was a surprise. It's counterintuitive because one would think collisions between a protein and other molecules on DNA would slow it down. But the system is so dynamic it doesn't appear to be an issue. Perhaps the easiest and clearest way to demonstrate the workings of cells are not nearly as random and haphazard as Darwinists had presupposed is with the fact that the human eye can detect a single photon, 
a 2016 article titled, Study Suggests Humans Can Detect Even the Smallest Units of Light, states, Research has shown that humans can detect the presence of a single photon, the smallest measurable unit of light. It is remarkable. A photon, the smallest physical entity with quantum properties of which light consists, is interacting with a biological system consisting of billions of cells all in a warm and wet environment. And the researcher further added, the response that the photon generates survives all the way to the level of our awareness, despite the ubiquitous background noise. Any man-made detector would need to be cooled and isolated from noise to behave the same way. To state the obvious, this is a direct contradiction to the Darwinian belief that the cell would be dominated by randomly colliding individual protein molecules. In conclusion, the existence of sophisticated DNA repair mechanisms, as well as the workings of the cell being far from random, poses a paradox to the Darwinian theory of evolution. These mechanisms, designed to maintain the integrity of DNA, contradict the necessity of unbounded random mutations proposed by Darwinism. Thus, we must reconsider evolution in light of these sophisticated cellular processes. The cell is not nearly as random as Darwinists once thought. Moreover, unbounded random mutations are essential to Darwin's theory. As Nobel laureate Jacques Monod once succinctly stated, pure chance, absolutely free but blind, is, at the very root of the stupendous edifice of evolution. Thus, without unbounded random mutations, Darwin's theory simply has no foundation to stand on. If Darwin's theory were a normal science instead of being basically a religion for atheists, this should, by all rights, forever falsify Darwin's theory.